Isaiah 57. So here it is. What is this? November 14th of 2021. Isaiah 57, verse 1, reading out of Stones to Knock, it says, The righteous one perishes, and no man takes it to heart. Men of kindness are gathered in, with no one understanding that because of the impending evil, the righteous one was gathered in. He will come in peace. They will rest on their resting places, he who walks in his integrity. So a certain fellow comes to mind. Randy Larson, it's like he was he was interested in this stuff. He was a good man. What the heck? He he died, was it last year? And it's like, why? Why would Yahweh not heal him? Why would he leave his wife to struggle, to languish emotionally, circumstantially on, on her own without him? Oh, well, the righteous one perishes and he's gathered in and because of impending evil. What, what, what the heck? What about the rest of us? So I, you know, I can read this and say, well, okay, that's that's makes you feel okay for them on the one hand, but I, I, I don't get it. It, it, uh, it doesn't make any sense on another hand. So if you back up before fifty-seven, why should I start there? Chapter fifty-four, fifty-five, fifty-six. Chapter 56 in the beginning says, thus says Yahuwah, observe justice and perform righteousness. For my salvation is soon to come and my righteousness to be revealed. Praiseworthy is the man who does this and the person who grabs hold, grasps it tightly, who guards the Sabbath against desecrating it and guards his hand against doing any evil. So. We could start anywhere, and it all plays in. But what I'm saying is that if you if you back up from Isaiah 65, there seems to be a uh, the feeling of a of a certain plateau here. Hazadik abed va ein ish shem el love ve anashi chesed. The righteous I will cut off, separate, and ain't, that's ein, doesn't exist, man, shem, that's there, or name, place, reputation, yoke to heart. What does that mean? There's nobody of the same heart. Ve anashi, anash is human weakness or people, kind chesed, tender loving kindness. Nun Aleph Samic Pe Yod Mem, Aesop, like Aesop's fables, that means to collect or gather together. Ba'ain, Bet Aleph Yod Nun, well, Bet Aleph means to enter. Aleph Yod is an island where Aleph Yod Nun is nothing. It's like you can't find what, what's going on? Mabin of understanding, Ki Mapane, because away from face, Ha Ra. Hey, Resh, I and hey, the evil, wicked purpose or shout. Noon, Aleph, Samic, Pei, again, Aesop, the act of gathering Hazadik. Doesn't say he's dead. I will Aleph bet Dalit. That doesn't say I will put to death. Perishing? Bet Dalit, it wasn't good. It wasn't Tov that Adam was bad. Bet Dalit, that's in Genesis chapter 2. It wasn't good that Adam was bad. Play on words. Bet Dalit means to be cut off separate alone or different than all the other animals. Aleph Bet Dalit means I will separate from the others. It doesn't say he's dying. Verse 2, Yod Bet Vav Aleph. Bet Vav Aleph, or Bet Aleph means to enter or to import. He will enter Shalom, full complete peace, va, uh, Yod, Nun Vav Chet Vav. Well, Nun Vav Chet is where you get the word for Noah, or Noach, which means comfortable descend like a plane coming in for a landing, upon Mem, Shin Kaf Bet, Vav Tav Mem. Well, Tav Mem, 
is there, T-H-E-I-R, plural third person. Vav is his or it. Mem, the place of, kaf, or mem kaf bet, means a bed or laid down to rest. Halakha, that's walking or the going. And then nun kaf chet, that's strong, vigorous, present, or in front. Lay down to rest the ones walking strong and vigorous. Now, I could say, well, that whole verse is a, those two verses seem like they're talking about somebody dying and being laid to rest in peace. But I could say, no, wait a minute. Yahuwah, remember he said he's going to let Yeshua talking about, he's going to let the wheat and the tares grow together. But they're not the same, and he's going to separate them. The wheat, the tares, the sheep, the goats. And the ones that even though they're humans, and nobody's technically perfectly righteous, the, the people that in their weakness have a heart of kindness, he will separate them and gather them to a place of understanding that's away from the evil shout. He will gather the righteous unto victory because the word Zadik is not only righteous, but it's victory, deliverance, and salvation. And they will lay down in shalom, in a strong peace. That's a confidence of Yahweh Elohim. Yahweh is my Elohim. I don't care what the political, medical, religious, educational, bankster authorities are saying, what their plans, what their intentions. It's not about them. Yahuwah Elohim, Yahweh is my Elohim. There's a certain place of security of that mind. And if I continue to listen to the voice of the giants, the Nephilim, the Rephaim, the Anakim, the Illuminati, the media, they're lying. Or they're telling you the truth of what they have intended, but Yahweh has bigger plans. He has other plans. Verse 3, Ve'atam kuf resh bet, that draws near, behold the children of the cloud. Ayan nun nun hey, cloudy, soothsaying. Related to like the verb, the word used on uh, Yom Kippur, ayan nun hey, ayan nun yod nun, to interest, poor, needy, humble, depressed, fruit of a tree, response to answer, but ayan nun vav nun is sorcery and conjuring. Verse 3 of Isaiah 57 is, it says now here, and now come here, stones to knock, verse 3, Isaiah 57, and now come here, come near to here, you children of the astrologer, seed of the adulterer and the adulteress, against whom do you take the light? And he goes down and he uh, tells them what's coming their way. I can read this and say it's talking about when the righteous one dies, but then it leaves the question, what about those who are left? Or I can say, no, no, Yahuwah is separating ideologically the thoughts, the minds of his people from the common culture around them. Al-Lev, yoked to the heart. What is the Shem yoked to a man's heart? And if you have Chesed. It's different than having fear. Let's go to verse 57, 11. I'm just going to jump through a few of these chapters. Ve'ata, me, Dalit Aleph Gimel Tav. And you, who, Dagat, care, worry, concern, anxious, distressed, uneasy, and fear, Tav Yod Resh Aleph, Tira, for thus, Tav Kaf Zion Bet Yod, lie, deception, fail, dried up, disappointed, Veati, me, my oath, 
low, that means no or negative, zakar, remember. The word zakar is also seed planting, masculine, remember, commemorate, recall to mind. Lo shamat, no place. Shem is, is place, but it's also a garden bed or soil because zakar is seed planting. Al lavka, attached to your heart. Hey, Lamed Aleph is removed far away. Ani, I am. Mem Chet Shin He. The place of Chet Shin He means still quiet, inactive, secret, hid. Where you get the word hidden, hush, made perceptible. Mem Chet Shin means, me, so either it's a secret that's still in quiet, like a snake in the grass that's camouflaged, or if it's Mem Chet Shin made perceptible concrete form or illustrated. That's the same word that we bumped into back in verse 2 of Isaiah 65. Vav mem, ayin lamed mem. Ayin lamed mem means hidden, universal, but it also is unknown, concealed, forgetful, unfaithful, mem ayin lamed, unfaithful, treacherous, lifted up, covered, hidden conspiracies. Vav aleph tav yod, symbols, Lo tira. Here, let me, let me put this back. I am not afraid of their secret conspiracy symbols. Have no place in your heart. Removed far away. Who cares? Teach how to fear me because the lies of those liars will dry up, fail like a disappointment, a stream without water. So what this verse 5711, what it says is, whom did you dread and fear that you should have been deceitful? You did not remember me. You did not take to your heart. Behold, I have been silent as always, but you did not fear me. I can read this as saying, don't be afraid of their conspiracy symbols. Now, I know, and people have sent me over the, over the years, over the last 40 years, all kinds of insights about conspiracy groups, plans, intentions, agendas. I know a lot of stuff, but I'm not going to talk about it because Yahweh says here, do not allow there to be a place in your heart. Shin Mem Tov. That's like, don't let the seed of their fear find a furrow in your heart to tuck in, take root and grow. Well, how can you do that if you're listening to all their threats and stories? So here when it says, I am silent as always, that's the way it's translated. But what I see here is, Ani Mahashaya. Ve ma'alam ve oti. Remember, oti is not only my oath or a symbol, but it's also a letter of the alphabet, but it also means they're hidden conspiracy symbols. So you'll find on the back of the US dollar and on heraldry from the knights in the houses of Europe uh, from the Middle Ages and on all kinds of corporate logos, you'll find all this stuff and it all means something. And you can spend all your energy pursuing knowing the ins and outs of all the details, like amen. Where did that come from? The reason I was going on about that is because, yes, St. Joe, thank you, put it up and said, hey, look at where this comes from. But it's like, I only have so much time and energy. That's to be human with our weakness, which is to say we have X number of days, we have a, a certain you might say your energy is like a gas tank full of fuel. Depending on what you put in, you've only got so much energy. You only, you only have so much mind time. And if, to spend it on seeking out, yeah, I know stuff, but I'm now going to spend virtually all my time and energy comprehending Yahuwah's word because the other stuff is going to come to a failed, like a dried up stream. They're either lies or Yahweh will scoff at their plans and bring them to ruin.
If we look at then verses 12, 13, 14, I could uh, go into details, but basically cause a revolution, declare fine high words, utterances of highly esteemed praiseworthy grandeur, modulate the scale up to the really good, beautiful, trilled solo voice, like raising from the first chord to the fifth, the, the musical act. Pave the highway, lead the way, guide the Camino Real. It's like that's the highway, it's called the King's Highway, the Royal Camino on the California coastline. Streamline the path for consideration. Easy to glide along the highest, most awesome Route 1. Route 1 is literally right along the California coast. It's interesting that there's a what's called a 17 mile drive right outside of Carmel near Monterey. One of the most beautiful drives on the face of the earth. But the, but the, the letter pay, just looking, the letter pay is the 17th letter. Pay is an open mouth. And the, the city called Carmel, there's also a place called Carmel up in Israel, Northern Israel on the coast, Kaf Resh Mem Lamed. It means crimson or cinnabar, vineyard, Garden land. It's a it's a word that means vines running over a wall. The word ram, kaf resh mem, karm, resh mem means high and, and great, lifted up, exalted. Mem vav lamed, karmal, mol means circumcised, complete, speech in front. It's like this is just absolutely the best. The best lush garden land is Carmel. And it's where you get the word of the sweet candy for caramel. It's a, it's a play on words. And I'm just saying that happens to line up with what this is saying. So this is the verse 14. I'll read verse 14 here in Isaiah 57. It says... Uh, he will say, pave, pave, clear the road, remove the obstacle from my people's path. The word for declare is amer. The word for pave, samik lamed vav, but it's a basket weighing. It's lift up, lead the way, highway, exalted, trod down arrogantly. Samik lamed, samik lamed is exalt, curl, trill, highly esteemed, fine detail, ladder to modulate music, samik lamed mem. Praiseworthy glory, Samik Lamed, Samik Vav Lamed. So what I'm saying is that what we're trying to do with these videos is what this verse is saying. Cause a revolution. Amer, revolt, take off in flight. Declare the fine high words. Ve Amer, utterances of highly esteemed, praiseworthy grandeur, like the word declaration of independence. Modulate up the scale. That's salute, salute. Doesn't just mean pave the highway. Kick it up to the really good, beautiful. So instead of us thinking and dwelling on the words of the giants pounding their chest, the Assyrians, the Babylonians, the Egyptians, the Persians, the Americans and British and Germans and Russians and Chinese and everybody that has a horrible thing to say about the city that they're besieging, focus our mind and heart on what Yahweh said streamline the path for consideration. We're trying to make these words easily accessible. Pano derek ha rimo ma kashul ma derek ami. Land on one side. Th this is Route 1 on the California coast. There's land, there's the continent of North America on this side of the road, and there's the Pacific Ocean on that side of the road. You have failure lies on in stumbling versus praise, glory, and flying. And then if you look at these words, it means no alternative route. It's the rock bottom of our variations. Turn and look. Consider. Evaluate. Regard. My people can dance barefoot on it free. The realization of what he's telling us here is, is absolutely astounding. 
I, I could elaborate, but we'll 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 move on here. I'm just saying that uh, last night, yesterday, as I was going through this, it was it was, it was an overwhelming occasion. Hodu la yuaki tov ki leolam chazdo. The fact that he has given us this distinction, the ability to see the two sides, and we have this Derek, this roadway right down the middle. And that we can choose his chesed, or we can listen to the words. Let's just call them the power brokers. The uh, I've got dozens of uh, different verses here that we don't have time to go into. Uh, let me go to Isaiah fifty-eight one. Cry out vociferously! Do not restrain yourself. Raise your voice like a shofar, proclaim to my people their willful sins to the house of Yaakov, Yaakov, their transgressions. What is a willful sin? It's spelled peshin ayin. And that's basically intentional rebellion. And transgression, you guys have gone astray. It says, don't restrain yourself, lift your voice like a shofar. So there's there's a few times on these talks where the amplitude of the voice gets a little bit louder. It goes on to say, they, well, I'll read this here. They pretend, that's in brackets, so that word pretend is not there. They seek me every day and desire to know my ways like a nation that acts righteously and has not forsaken the justice of his Elohim. They inquire about the laws of justice from me as if they desire the nearness of Elohim asking, what? We fast and you didn't see? Why did we afflict our souls and you didn't know? So Isaiah 58, we've done a video about this before, is Yahuwah telling us why it's not working. So we could say, who's he talking to? Is he talking to the Jews? Is he talking to the Christians? Is he talking to the house of Jacob? Their willful sins. So we're talking about coming back to regard the Torah. And I know fully well that this concept is contrary to church teachings. When I say church, you've got the Orthodox, which is basically Eastern Orthodox, Russian Orthodox, Romanian, and Greek. And they believe the Catholics went astray. And so you've got the entire Catholic church that claims to have taken over the whole world as the universal church. And then you've got the Protestants who broke away from the Catholics with some say over 50,000 denominations. And all of that, the Orthodox, the Catholic, and the Protestant think that to talk about Yahuwah's ways, his laws, his instructions, is heresy. But yet, according to walking in Yahuwah's instructions, that whole ideology is heretical. Everybody claims to be seeking Yahuwah and his ways, but he says, here's like chapter 58, you seek out personal gain on your fast day and you extort all your debts. You fast for grievance and strife to strike each other with a wicked fist. Then he goes on to the remedy. I'm just jumping through real fast. Verse 13, if you restrain your foot because it is the Shabbat, refrain from accomplishing your own needs on my Kadosh day. If you proclaim the Shabbat a delight and the set apart day of Yahweh honored, and you honor it by not engaging in your own affairs from seeking your own needs or discussing the forbidden, then you will delight in Yahweh, and I will mount you astride the heights of the world. I will provide you the heritage of your forefather Jacob, for the mouth of Yahweh has spoken. Well, is that true or not? Should we regard the Shabbat or not? The entire Christian church for 2,000 years is fundamentally opposed to Isaiah 58, verse 13 and 14. But the mouth of Yahweh spoke. Do we go back to the word that came out of his mouth? Or as the church says, our voice is the vicarious Christ, vicar of Christ, written on the headband of the high priest, the Pope of Rome. Our voice supersedes written scripture. So therefore, 
the fourth commandment of the ten in Deuteronomy and Exodus 20 says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it set apart. And the Christian church says, no. We will usurp his authority with our own declaration. Our own Amer, find high words. It's just wrong. It's rebellious. It's Pasha, Peshin Ayan. He said, let your voice raise up like a shofar and tell my people their willful sins. The Christian church, the people in the pew do not know what their leaders have done. They are not disobeying the voice of Yahweh on purpose. But the leadership certainly knows. It's a transgression. But they don't even know. For this translation to say they pretend to see me, seek me every day. Well, maybe they are seeking him every day and it's not working. Something's wrong and they don't know what it is. So here is we're looking through these words. Chapter 59, surely the hand of Yahweh is not too short. His ears not blocked and too heavy. It's your iniquities which have separated between you and between your Elohim. It's your transgressions that have caused him to hide his countenance from you, from hearing you. So here's another verse of him turning away and not listening. And so if we, if we analyze these words, what it's saying is, he gave us certain instructions. And for whatever reason, whether the culture has changed, whether we were lied to by our pastors and professors, whether the church changed stuff, where the devil lied to us, whether our own insanity got to us, he says the way the universe is built is that if you contradict or profane the truth, walking in his ways, or you just don't know, and you happen to be walking in ways that are not his ways, Nothing works. He can't hear your prayers. Your enemies overrun. But to return to his words, to realize, oh, it's not Sunday, it's Saturday. Or it's not the first day, it's the seventh day. And I know some people think that Friday is the seventh day and some people think it's on the lunar Sabbath. The point is, Regardless of what day it is, we know what day it's not, you could say. So the quest is the seeking, the searching, the trying to find, going back to Isaiah 65, what day is the Sabbath? What day are the Mikra Kodesh, the set apart days to gather, the Moedim of Leviticus 23? What's the right calendar? You got the wrong calendar. We're not going to be on the right days. Why is all the stirring up about, oh, the language, the calendar, blah, 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 blah. No, it's because of this. Our enemies have ruled over us. They changed the calendar. They scrambled the language. They, in like the fourth beast of Daniel 9, chews up with his teeth. The word teeth means change and variance changing words, and then the word leg, he stomps with his legs. It's custom habits and tradition. He stomps, paves a highway, a road of custom habit and tradition, and the ways of Yahuwah are completely lost until the time that Yahuwah restores his language, which is now. And you get verse 14 of Isaiah 58, and it says, then, when then, the first word is Aleph Zion, it means then at that time, you will delight, Oneg, joined to Yahweh. The word is Rachav, which is like a chariot team, rider and a horse, as opposed to like this, well, it's the same picture of a knight riding a horse. Upon the heights, the herit, uh, heights of the world, but the word height there is not Reshmem or Ayin Lamed, it's Bet. Mem, Vav Tav Yod. Here's the reason for analyzing the spelling of the words. Tav Yod means I will, or I have, or I am, but Bima means to stage as a theater. Or Bet Mem is a pulpit. So they say, oh, it's a, a, a high place, a Bima. Yahweh is staging the earth as a theater. And if we want to 
you might say Rakav, ride with him, being fed the heritage, but that heritage is Nun Kat Lamed, which means sick or sweet. It's where you got the word challah bread. Yaakov is to be raised up to climb out of the pit. We talked about that last week. And then your forefather, Abika, Aleph Bet Yod can also mean your desire. As the mouth, Peyod of Yahweh Debar, the mouth of Yahweh spoke, it cannot be changed. It's an empirical decree, the empire of, you might say, the heavenly realm. He will feed us the sweet things or the sickness. What did he say to Yaakov? The mouth of Yahweh spoke, and we've been only given the mouth of translators and the Nephilim giants, the Rephaim, or like ghosts of the dead, Rephaim. The ones who would take over the world and call Yahuwah ineffective or a non-issue. Again, we could spend quite some time going back. I, I, I had uh, written out numerous verses here. Verse 9 of Isaiah 59, that is why, if you look all through chapter 59, that is why justice has become distant from us and righteousness has not reached us. We hope for light, but behold, there is darkness for brightness, but we walk in deep darkness. We grope the wall like the blind and like the eyeless. We grope, we stumble at noon as in the dark of, of night, as if in graves like the dead. All of 59 is setting up a problem. And then in verse uh, 20, well, let's, let's back up. Verse 18, just as his earlier retribution, so he will repay wrath to his enemies. Oh, Yahweh eventually will step in. Retribution to his adversaries. adversaries. He will pay retribution to the islands, whatever that means. That's another way of looking at that. But verse 19, from the west, people will fear the name of Yahuwah, and from the rising of the sun, his kavod, his glory, that would be from the Orient, for travail will come upon like a river. The spirit of Yahweh will gnaw at them. That word to gnaw is noon, samic, samic, vav. Samic, samic is a waving flag. Noon, samic is a banner to be lifted up. It means to cause grief or to melt, dissolve, to ferment, agitate, fizz. Samic, samic is this action of fluttering or galloping like a horse. The word the horse is sus. The, uh, the name of Yahuwah is not just how do you pronounce the four letters, but it's all these matters that we're discussing. Who is he? What is his ways? How do you walk on his way? What did he say? What did he mean? What's he going to do? That's the Shem of Yahweh. From the West, well, that's the word Arev, which is the word blending, which is, well, that could be America. So from um, America, like what we're doing here from the Western Hemisphere, people will fear. That's Yerah is fear, Yod Resh Aleph, but it also, Resh Aleph, hey, means to put on exhibition, allow to be perceptible. As far as I know, my whole life, the name yod heh vav -Hey has never been made perceptible. I was just riding an airplane a couple days ago, and if you're there, hello, Sue. The, the lady that I was sitting next to asked, hey, what does that main name mean? How does that work? I tried to explain the yod heh vav -Hey. It's never been made perceptible. Jehovah maybe is all you get, but even that was some ancient or the word jah from Jamaica, J-A-H, they hold on to a bit of his name, but what does it mean? How can you fear or make, put his name on exhibition if you don't have any idea because all his name and ways have been altered? The only way that the, the Ruach of Elohim will gnaw at them is for us to lift up 
and make a big deal out of his stuff. That's what we're doing presently. Verse 20, a redeemer will come to Zion. Those of Jacob who repent from their willful sin, Nam Yahweh. The word for Zion is one who regards my command. The only way for Yaakov to repent from following the offensive rebellion of what looks like what the church has done for 2,000 years to the instructions of Yahuwah, yes, they've been following the glorious Messiah, Savior, the Christ Jesus, but if it's contrary to the Shem of Yahuwah, contrary to his ways, contrary to his instructions, contrary to his Torah, then it's a fake Christ. It's, it's not true. It's a false God. It's an Elohim Akrim. He came next in the future. It was different. It was strange. It was Ach, a brother, Char, white-haired. Even the book of Revelation, he has, you know, white hair, flames of, eyes of flames. And I'm not trying to mock or disdain the true legitimate Yeshua, but he never said, copy my face, paint a picture and worship me as your God. That's an offense. If you look at verse 60, chapter 60, arise, shine, your light has arrived. The glory of Hashem, no, excuse me, the glory of Yahuwah. See, they, they don't even exalt his name in the Hebrew Tanakh. Why? So his great, this book was written in the 1980s and made available. Up until the 1980s, the people that read Hebrew had, did not have Stone Tanakh available. This is a new invention. But they still haven't given you his name. It's the kavod of Yahuwah. Shines upon you or through you, with you. For behold, darkness may cover the earth and a thick cloud may cover the kingdoms. But with you, Yahuwah shines and his glory will be seen upon you, through you, in you, with you. Nations will walk by your light and kings by the brilliance of your shine. Wait a minute. That means this isn't the end of the world. That means something has to change once we exalt him in reality. And the rest of chapter 60 is all about lift up your eyes all around and see they're assembling and coming to you. Your sons arise from afar, your daughters will be raised at their side. Other people will bring back to, seems to say, the land of Israel, those who are searching for Yahuwah. And this has to do with then a picture of the, you might say, the rebirthing, the city of Jerusalem will call the city of Yahuwah, Zion of the Kadosh of Israel. It hasn't happened yet. And this isn't a new heavens and a new earth. So this isn't the end of the world. Chapter 60 hasn't happened. Chapter 61, joyful tidings to the humble, spiritual preeminence. I'm just reading the, the statements on the side of the text. Hymn of thanksgiving. Chapter 62, for Zion's sake, I will not be silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not be still until her righteousness or victory, deliverance, and salvation emanates like bright light and her salvation blazes like a torch. Nations will perceive your righteousness and all the kings your honor. You will be called by a new name. That's on this temporal realm of this earth. It's not the new heavens and new earth after we die, after the rapture, after the resurrection. This stuff hasn't happened yet. Then chapter 63 looks like it's a chapter of the Messiah coming. I alone have trodden the rhyme press. Why, why is your raiment red like somebody treading grapes? A day of vengeance in my heart. I was astounded that there was no supporter. My arm wrought salvation to me and my wrath was a support. There's another way to read that. Verse 7. The kindnesses, the chesed of Yahuwah, I will proclaim as the praises of Yahuwah in accordance with all that Yahweh has bestowed upon us and the abundant goodness to the house of Israel that he has bestowed, that he will bestow, that he does 
constantly bestow upon them in his compassion and in his chesed and racham. For he said in verse 8 of Isaiah 63, indeed, they are my people, children who will not be false. And he became their savior, or he saved them. In all their troubles, he was troubled. So an angel from before him saved them. Is that Yeshua, a messenger, a sent one? Is that what he's saying? That's verse 9 of Isaiah 63. With his love and with his compassion, he redeemed them. He lifted them and bore them all the days of the world. Verse 10, but they rebelled and distressed his Holy Spirit is Ruach HaKodesh. So he changed toward them into an enemy. He fought them. Here, people say, well, where does it say that Yahweh is our enemy? Right here, Isaiah 63, verse 10. But then they remembered the days of old of Moshe with his people. Where is the one? Well, now this is going back to say, like reading in Nehemiah and Daniel and the song of Moshe, it's like we have actually failed the covenant. And Yahweh did everything he said. Why doesn't he step in and intervene like he promised? This is why. Isaiah 63. And then Isaiah 64, at the end of 63, if only you would tear open the heavens and descend, the mountains would melt before you. It's not a matter of where did he go? Is he on vacation or is he asleep? Why doesn't he come back? He will if we walk in his ways. So now, verse 7 of 64, Isaiah 64, now, Yahweh, you are our father. We are the clay. You are the potter. We are all your handiwork. Oh, Yahweh, do not become greatly enraged and do not remember iniquity forever. Your cities have become a wilderness. What's the turnaround? Isaiah 65. I have constantly been accessible. The truth is clearly manifest. Quit doing your stupid stuff. That's basically what he's saying. So the whole point, Isaiah uh, 63, 17, Chesed Yahweh Zakir Tahalot Yahweh Ka'al Kal Asher Gimelnu. The Chesed of Yahweh, I will remember, I will recall to mind, I will commemorate. The brilliance of Yahweh, like yoked to everything that he said he would repay us. He'd repay us evil for evil, stupidity for stupidity, but goodness and kindness for walking in our ways. So even though this message seems to be anathema, heretical to the Christian church, this seems to be pagan idolatry to the Jewish rabbinical mind where we honor Yeshua as being the word of Yahuwah manifest in human form. We can't listen to those voices. We just have to listen to Yahuwah's voice and say, okay, if we're on the right track, this is what we're going to do. We can't be terrorized by the voice of the media and our political geographical enemies if you think about it, here in America, our own national leaders have caused us more harm than any foreign agent, any other country. Our own political leaders have ruined our economy and ruined our peace. So who's our enemy? Can we identify with, with a national allegiance? It's, it's really hard to, uh, to sign up for that. So it's Yahweh or nothing. It's Yahuwah or bust. So here we are. Who is he and what did he say? Anyway, we can elaborate, but at this point, I will open it back up to you guys to discuss either Isaiah 65 or anything else that we're talking about here. Um, let me just make one point of Isaiah 65, verse 12. I will consign you to the sword and all of you will slump down and slaughter. He's talking about his people. Because I called and you did not answer, I spoke and you did not hear, you did what is evil in my eyes and what I did not desire, you chose. 
So the solution is the opposite. Choose what he desires. Do what is good in his eyes. Listen to his voice when he speaks. The word call is kufresh aleph also means invite to learn how to read. And the word answer, ayanun hey, means to respond as a chorus responds when you're singing a song. You have the, the lead singer, then you have the chorus that responds. Everything we're trying to facilitate by this Skype call, by the study of this language, is playing into that verse. We're trying to do what Yahweh said he wants his people to do. And recant and turn around, which is to say teshuva, from 2000. And then if you go back to the, uh, the, the Jewish apostasy, 3000 years of deviation, going back to the days of David. That was the last record of anybody actually being on track. So here we have 3000 years we're trying to correct. Of course, it looks stupid and wrong to those who are being good churchmen. Anyway, opening it back up to you here. Anybody on the call that wants to say anything, you're welcome. I'm just looking at the rest rest of um, 65 there. <clears throat> we had a little discussion about this on uh, Thursday night. Anyway, just we, we were kind of discussing about how even in the Messiah's day when he you know, was on the scene, there there was another authority sitting on uh, in the temple, essentially, and sitting in and the high priest and people who, who didn't belong here. And even when you just read here in Isaiah, if you continue on in verse um, 14 or verse 13, it says, Therefore, thus says Yahuwah Elohim, behold, my servants shall eat, but you shall be hungry and my servants shall drink but you shall be thirsty and just even then they had you know the authority usurped whether it's the synagogue of satan or the the samaritans that were brought in i mean that was part of northern israel but um <clears throat> you just you just see that reflected and that's i think goes at a loss for a lot of people not having that historical context and background of who some of the jews were versus you know just because they are of israel they are not all of israel and just reading on there in 65 you see that there's a contrast between my my actual servants versus you people who are claiming to be something you're not See, verse 18, only rejoice and be happy forever for what I am creating. Behold, I am creating Jerusalem as gladness, his people as joy. I will rejoice over Jerusalem, exalt my people. But he also, right before that, verse 17, I'm creating new heavens and a new earth. The former will no longer be recalled and no longer taken to heart. It's like, well, wait a minute. If that's the new heavens and new, a new earth, why have I said a number of times here that this hasn't happened yet? It's present tense because that word new can be restored. It's not necessarily the same new as in Revelation chapter 22, where the new Jerusalem comes down and he rolls up the heavens as a scroll and he, and he you might say, wipes out and then remakes the earth, or whatever that looks like. But all this stuff in Isaiah is talking about what other chapters say. He's going to make the land of Israel regrow like the Garden of Eden. We read about that, I think it was in Zephaniah. And to have the expectation, which is the tikva, the hope. He said that he would restore the earth and life to his people, even to the point of resurrecting the Valley of Dry Bones in Ezekiel 37, if we would listen to his voice. And to continue to say, that's why we worship on Sunday as the holy day and work like crazy on Saturday to, to honor Jesus for resurrecting from the dead Sunday morning. It's not true. None of that story is true. He would have resurrected sometime Saturday night or the seventh day. And I know when I say Saturday or Sunday, people get upset about whether it's the lunar Sabbath or the Friday. And it's like, I'm not trying to contend. I'm trying to have a conversation. It seems like it seems like we go out of our way to talk about how Christianity is wrong. But it's not just them. The whole thing, if it's if it's a human agenda, if it's a human agenda, 
it's off track. It's a matter of going back to saying, what did Yahweh say? And as soon as we try to find out what did Yahuwah say, that's where we come up with what day is the Sabbath day and what calendar. And it's going to bump into that is what I'm saying. And I'm, not, I'm saying that at least where we are presently is at least trying to find, at least recognizing that what we have, whether it's Jewish, Christian, Buddhist, Hindu, whatever, we've been lied to and it's not what he said. And if he said from the east as well as from the west, his, the, the kavod of Yahweh will be shining through us, then that means that everybody in the Orient, whether you're from Thailand, Vietnam, China, Mongolia, Korea, Japan, they're all going to be looking at who is us, not just you and me, but, but people who are returning to realize Yahuwah's words, and they have to notice a distinction the real Yahuwah from everything else, and then once they start looking at him, then they have to figure out what day is his day and what is his calendar. It's going to bump into that. that that's, the, that's the point I'm trying to make. And if it looks like, why do we have to squabble about that? It's because he's the guy that made an issue of the appointed times. It's going to be a worldwide conflict of pondering, of determining. It already is. Just within us. I mean, how many different calendars do we do we know about? Anyway, th we've all been led astray by the big shots who think they know stuff and then are in the position of demanding that their ideas are the right one and only. So you got the Jews of the synagogue 2,000 years ago. You've got the 1,000 years between David and Yeshua. Nothing but stupid stuff going on. And then you've got the whole world right now that has to be recorrected back into, it's like, where's the keel that'll put the ship back into alignment on the proper trajectory? Well, I found it very encouraging. Um, you know, I, I know it, you can definitely find a big bullseye with mainstream Christianity and, and just about any other, um, you know, side roads. But I'm finding that I need to go back and go through all those chapters again to make sure that that I'm more in line because I'm I was really getting convicted on some of those things. Um, so I really appreciated that, and I, I really appreciate the encouragement of of um, not falling to the nephilim nephilim of the of the government or the mandates or or any of these these other entities that think that they can tell you how to live or uh, what you do to your body. So anyway, I just found it all very encouraging. I think out of everything that they can do, whatever that means, the most important thing is to be afraid of Yahuwah and what he will do, what well, he's going to do. And I, I think, think I, th I think like uh, we have to, we have to have our line in the sand. Like he says, he'll protect us. Mm hmm but we can't have an 11 in that protection. Like we got to make sure Leviticus 23 is on our brain all the time. Like we're constantly going back to that touch point. You know, we take a look at whatever the, the world is. It doesn't matter. As long as I'm doing you who is saying and what's this thing it's written down. He wrote it down for me. It's not, you know, it's not that far. Moshe said it's in, in uh, Deuteronomy 30, it's not that far from me. You don't have to go to heaven to get it. It's on, in your heart and on your lips. He, he said it, way back then um it's not some future event that it would be on our heart and uh, in our heart and on our lips it's it's already it's here now like it can be here and now so like how do we avoid being afraid of the nephilim just being more afraid of yahuwah because he'll, he'll keep us out of his protection he absolutely will he's not gonna he has to it has to be fair for everybody <laughs> You know, yeah, it, I think it, just, you know, looking at it personally, just, you know, what you were saying that um, he's in our heart and on our lips. So when we when we deviate from that, whatever comes into our minds or whatever we are hearing coming from our lips defiles us. And that's what I'm saying as far as for me, that's where I'm being convicted. I mean, you know, yeah, and I, I recognize all the other people and, and what you're saying. It seems real clear cut. Um, but, you know, we, we have to first clean our own house and just, you know, make sure that we can um, find that shalom, find that peace so that we can help others while they're trying to resonate and uh, 
get away from from all of that that's so distracting i, I think this is the point that I, I was talking to tim about or somebody but i think uh i think i'm finding strength in being dogmatic about his stuff like i'm not bringing levin in i'm not gonna I'll, i'm not going to entertain anybody else like we keep hearing in the hebrew he's saying learn to read and he may be saying learn to read hebrew but he may be saying learn to read period read, read my words for yourself and there's enough in the english even sorry i know this is the uh erectology, but there's enough in the english that you can you can figure out how to be his kadoshi his his follower you know? and we don't have to we don't have to care what the pastors and the priests and the rabbis we don't care all we have to do is be strong in Yahuwah and in, in his words. And that's, that's it. Like nothing else, nothing else matters to quote Metallica. You know, there's a, you, you mentioned about that uh, in um, Isaiah 59, verse 21. It says, Ani zat brit otam amer Yahuwah. Ruach asher aleka ve debari asher shamati be peika. He's saying, I am this. Zion Aleph Tav, you might say, is the word this with an exclamation point, Brit. Or he's saying, I, have, I am establishing my identity with this covenant with you, declares Yahweh, my spirit that. I am Lamed Yod Kaf with you, you could say yoked with you, and Dabari, my word, my stipulations that I Shin Mem Tav Yod. Well, Shin Mem is the word name, but it also means to place. So if you have a Kaf that I have placed with you or in you, it would be Semitic. I have placed in your mouth will not be removed. Yod men vav shin vav is it will not be removed or depart from your mouth or from the mouth of your offspring or from the mouth of the seed of your seed or the offspring of your offspring declares Yahweh from now until forever. So when I first saw this verse years ago, I realized that the word Semitic, as in the Semitic alphabet, the Semitic language group is Hebrew, Greek, Latin, English, French, Spanish, Russian, German all the other languages based on the 22 letter Hebrew alphabet, Yahweh stuck it in our mouth. And he says, I'm not going to let it be removed from your mouth. There's the proof right there. Verse 21. That there's something about the vestiges, the Hebrew, the Hebrew alphabet root at the bottom of all the other language permutations still retains the covenant. So you're right, even in English, which is in the mouth of your offspring's offspring or the seed of your seed, can be traced back and find the covenant. I think it's very important for people maybe tuning in and have never heard stuff like this before, you know, to search out where the leaven is and stop adding traditions of men into how we worship Yahuwah and just worship him how he said to do it. And and when Yeshua says, my way is not heavy, it's not a heavy burden, it's it's pretty simple. It, it, it really is, you know. Eight years later, I'm here to tell anybody who's watching, keeping their Shabbats easy. It's it's not hard. You can do it. Everybody can do it. Everybody can, everybody can do Passover. Everybody can do uh, unleavened bread. Everybody can do Shavuot. Everybody can go camping with their friends for a week. It's, it's fun. <laughs> You know, that people saying that this is really hard. Nobody has to eat pork. Like you make the decision, and you're not going to put leaven in your body. But then also, there's an idea of religious teachings that we're supposed to also incorporate in. No, stop, cut it out, get it out. It's leaven. You know. Then I just want to encourage everybody out there. There's touch points in the scripture. Leviticus 23 tells us exactly how to do his things. Now, given that, just for what it's worth, I was with some friends down in California who've been trying to walk in keeping his uh, Passover, for example, for 10 years or 12 years or whatever it's been. And every year we go, hey, wait a minute. We're not doing what it says exactly. We should, we should do something a little bit different. Every year. And it's like, why? There's the words. Just do what he said. And it's like, 
the, the Pesach meal doesn't look like the traditional Jewish Seder. Not what he described. It's taken on other trappings. And so when you first return to Yahuwah's stuff and you say, well, how do the Jews do it? Okay, we'll start there. It's like that's step one out of a certain compound Christian gate. So you look to the Jews, only you realize the Jews are doing it as according to their traditions, which have evolved over the last two, three thousand years also. And it takes a while for you to, you know, veer this side to that side until you find your right down the road in the middle. Is Yahweh going to destroy and beat up anybody who has a leg of lamb that you buy from the uh, grocery store that's been cut on a butcher saw? And uh, uh, really, is that he didn't say to do it that way? But does that mean he's going to beat up those people? But here's the biggest problem. You got to go look at about 100 years ago. In the in the late 1930s, 1940s in Europe, why did the Jews get holocausted? by the Nazis. Why? Weren't they keeping Yahweh's festivals? Weren't they reading his language? Weren't they keeping Shabbat? Weren't they trying to do what he said? My only answer to that is, I have no idea. They were being, let's say they were being good Jews, but I heard the testimony of some Jewish lady that said, she said, we didn't even know we were Jews. We were just good citizens. And all of a sudden, somebody said, hey, you got to wear this yellow star, and they threw us into a concentration camp, and it's like, why? You're Jewish. I am? Yeah, we did research on your family her heredity, and it's like, doggone it. They weren't necessarily recognizing that they were walking in Yahweh's path. So the, the scary part, you might say, is to say, uh-oh, what if we walk in Yahweh's ways and seek his face and learn his language and keep his moedim, and they still try to holocaust us? It's like, I can't answer that question. And if we look at the 1940s and say, yeah, but it happened to them. It's like, we don't know what happened to them. We don't know if they were more into their own traditions than following Yahweh. All I know is I have to read these words and hope my life for this life and for eternity that everything that comes out of the mouth of Yahweh is yea and amen. Absolutely true that I must find myself accountable and responsible with fidelity to corroborate, maintain, and align with. It's my job to align with him. And I can't account for what happened 80 years ago in Europe. I don't know. We can't use that as a precedent to say, yeah, but even look what happened to the Jews. They weren't necessarily walking in his ways. But we can account for ourselves, each one of us, and we will be held accountable, each one of us. So at the end of the day, where's our line in the sand? Right. And, and draw it and don't cross it. And that's it. You know, and, and to that end, I, I, think, I think it's worth sticking in your brain for memory and holding on to it. And on that note, let's end on a prayer. Well, does anybody else has anything else they want to say or, or ask or throw into the mix before you go to the uh, non-recorded section? Yes, not. Okay. Yehua, okay. Thank you. Thank you for remembering us in the dispersion. Thank you for waking us up. Father, that people who would hear this call just find it. Lead them to find it. Lead them to find these teachings and that they begin to do your stuff and get all the leaven out, Father, all the way out, not partially, all the way, all the way, all the way. Yahuwah, thank you for being, being our Elohim. Just, and thank you again for remembering us. In Yahweh's name I pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. May it be so.